Hello, this is Michael Wojak with the City Council update for October 4th, uh, 2010. Really, one thing I'm going to talk about in the Committee of the Whole, one thing in the City Council meeting in the Committee of the Whole, we had the discussion about the um, bike lanes on 16th Street, which are not going forward at this time. However, a total of five people indicated a willingness to support it once the entire street is done. Um, there seemed to be a little bit of a misunderstanding in the media about what exactly this entailed, but the idea is, is that um, it was portrayed as being bicycle lanes versus a um, travel lane, and that's really not the case. There were two separate decisions that were unrelated as um, that were made. The first decision was whether to have a um, four-lane road as there is right now with no left turn lane or a three-lane road with a center turn lane going both directions. Um, nationally, studies time and time and time again show that for bicyclists, pedestrians, and for um, automobiles, um, clearly the three-lane design is better than the four-lane design. In addition to that, even in Minneapolis, uh, Minnehaha Parkway, which has 50% more traffic than um, the um, street in question also showed that um, no issues with congestion when this happened. Actually congestion is um, there's only one lane of travel but given the way that's um, driven, the way the roads are posted for speed and the amount of turning on and off of the corridor, it actually does not hurt the, um, the overall performance and congestion to do a change like this. Um, and that said, with the scientific basis and a recommendation from Public Works to make the decision that was safer for bicyclists, pedestrians, and cars, and transit, um, we chose the less safer of the route. So done and done, and we'll reconsider this um, at some other point. The uh, next thing I want to discuss is finally, after um, far too long of delay, we have a landlord code of conduct in place. Um, it's, the, it, it's very tough. Um, I do, I do believe it's going to help us really crack down on some of the persistent slumlords that we have in uh, the city of Rochester, and there are some. Uh, most landlords are very good. I was always disappointed that some of the landlord association members um, fought so hard to prevent anything from being done. I would have feared that this would somehow be unjustly applied to them. Um, now that it's passed, we have an obligation to in fact show them that um, what we said about going after the bad landlords and leaving the good landlords alone is in fact true because we do have some bad landlords and I have every intent of going after them and I'm not planning on being too particularly nice. Um, the way that it's set up is it's kind of like a um, Ten Commandments kind of document except there are much, there's much more, um, there's more than ten different things but um, some of the key ones that I was strongly supportive of is that um, the licensee or applicant's actions have not created a threat or danger to the public's health, safety, and welfare. Um, that's, you know, that, that's huge. That's what this is all about, is that we have some persistent problem landlords bringing in bad tenants, not taking care of the issues that persist, um, and things like that. We, we now have a way of revoking not only the license for that property, but um, all of their properties, which should make them uh, jump a little bit more. Um, there were a number of, um, this was delayed two months so that the um, certain members of the city council would have an opportunity to um, meet with the landlords. Um, I was particularly dis and that was um, Ed Ruska and Mark Bilderbeck were the ones that met with the landlords. I have to say that I'm particularly disappointed in how that went because, um, you know, they met with the landlords and then they did absolutely no communication whatsoever back to the rest of us on the city council. So they came in there with um, a couple things that were just plain silly and um, at least one of them we got rid of. There's a loophole that landlords like to do where um, they're not in compliance, not in compliance, not in compliance. They finally show up on the court date or whatever and they, um, oh, I'm in compliance, so don't don't find me. Well, we're not going to play that game. Um, if they're not in compliance, um, we can take action for them. We're not going to play this game where they're going to fix it up right before we take action. Um, there's a, another concern that I had is um, they wanted to delete uh, an entire section on um, subdivision 14 and let me go back and just take a quick peek at that one and subdivision 14 is that um, oh um, if they if they are doing a bunch of work without taking out building permits they could get their license revoked the city council actually took that one out which is um, and the rationale that um, some people gave was because that was um, excessive because some people have hundreds of units. Um, if you have hundreds of units, I think you know you need to have a building permit. And if it really is an accident, they come before us anyways. But um, we softened that one up and um, took that one out. Um, one thing that um, Ed Ruska and Mark Bilderbeck did recommend is we put a new mandate on landlords that they have to attend um, 
uh, crime-free multi-housing phase one, which basically teaches them how to um, be smart. This is particularly important for some of the um, newer landlords who are just getting into it for the first time. The interesting thing about this is that um, you know it's it's a mandate, but it's I think it's it's pretty smart. It's a good thing that we should have been doing for a long time. But um, I will. Some of the people who are supportive of this have been very anti-mandate, so I look forward to seeing how they're going to view some of these other things in the future. Um, and then the one thing, one change that did get passed that I didn't like is um, they added a lines that basically said if the landlord does something that's a danger to um, the health, the health or safety of the community, um, they don't. We don't necessarily go after them if it didn't have anything to do with the rental property. And why I didn't like that is that's kind of the gray line when Laura Boardman um, drove around her boyfriend shooting up Rochester. It can't happen at a rental complex per se, and she was loosely renting from him, but that creates a gray area where I don't know if we could necessarily have gone after him. I asked um, at the meeting, and it appears that we could not have. So, not a big fan of um, taking a strong ordinance and making it weaker. But um, in the end, um, after you know having this city council not done anything in this regard for a very long time, I'm glad that we have something strong in place, and it's a tool I look forward to using to really cracking down on some of the bad rental practices here in Rochester. You know, you can go to places where you can see the consequences of poorly run structures. You have what Kevin Horseman and Greg Marn have um, pulled off on the four and a half street neighborhood and any number of other, others in the town. And we're not done with this and we certainly have to go after the conduct of some of the people renting as well. But this is a new tool that we have in our tool belt and all of this is new and unique and things we couldn't um, see before. So if you have any questions on this, you just let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. And I'm gonna put a little information on my website as well. It's votewojack.org and we've been using the blog more and more out there to commu uh, communicate information. So thank you for your attention and um, I will see you after the next meeting.